Just 10 minutes away from the Jersey Shore is the small suburban town of Oakhurst, home to the family-run Mike and Nellie's. Opened in 1996, the restaurant was the lifelong dream of two men, Nellie Farber and his son Mike. I wanted to name it Nellie Mike's, but he said, no, it's Mike and Nellie's, you're the man, because he's that kind of guy. Everybody loved my father. Everybody would come in to talk to Nellie. He knew everybody's name, made everybody feel special. He was the front of the house. My dad was the back, Nellie's the front. We were a very good team. He brought in the people, and I kept them here. Everything was going great until Nellie passed away. When my grandpa and Nellie died, we didn't really know what to do anymore. It felt weird to be here. Like, it's not really Mike and Nellie's without Nellie. Now it's just kind of Mike and nothing. All right, let me go right and check. When he left this earth, I had to take over doing everything that he did. Ice cream delivery. Plus what I do, and I just become overwhelmed. Slow the shit down. Shut up. I know, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Since my grandpa died, the restaurant's been neglected. Hi, is there anything that I can help you with? Yeah, can you <laughs> Oh, ew, okay. The restaurant is grimy. The carpet is a mess. It's nasty, crusty, moldy. It's tragic to look around. I think they need to redo this place. People, they don't come here for atmosphere. They come here for food. And the food here, I believe, is great. Your mind is like matching. It's like there's something wrong with it, like chemicals. How's everything with your dinner? Anything you want to share with me? A little Sorry. bit more cooked, yeah. It's like sauce. Mike's food, it's really not up to standard. Mike, do me a favor. Will you push 22, please? I got it. When I first started, Mike would never just dump the food out into the plate. Now it's like, it doesn't matter. But yet, at the same time, he thinks that this food is great. They don't like it. Well, what's the fucking reason? It just says it has no taste. Oh, really? Yeah. I've only been making franchise for 35 years. Can you believe this shit? The biggest problem at Mike and Nelly's isn't the decor. Honestly, the big problem is Mike. Everybody didn't go out. All right, I got it. I got it. He feels that he comes in, he has to take care of everything. Did I call for a veal capri? I got it. Give it to me, right? This is my job. He doesn't let other people take moral responsibility. It's just becoming too much for him. I want to get my drink. Since Uncle Nelson's passing, Mike does drink quite a bit. I put a beer in the freezer, a couple beers in there, these are hot. There are some nights where he's just completely hammered. Where's the two flounders? I don't know where anything is today. It starts to affect the food, and he starts to miss things on the tickets. I don't even know how many fillets I got, but you know what I'm doing, man. My dad is my hero, and it's very difficult to know that my hero is struggling and, like, gasping for air, you know? I really wish I was able to ignore the fact that this is my dad's life. I really, really hope that Chef Ramsey can help. Before Chef Ramsey arrives at Mike and Nellie's, there's a young woman anxious to fill him in on the issues of the restaurant. Mike's oldest daughter, Samantha. Thanks for helping us. Samantha, right? Yeah, hi. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks for picking me up. I'm excited for you to be here. Well, I'm um, excited to be here. First time for me. Um, how have you been? I'm all right. Yeah? Yeah, I just we really need help right now. Yeah? Yeah, a lot of problems at the restaurant. What's the one thing that you think is wrong with it? Ever since my grandpa died, my dad, he hasn't been able to move forward. OK. How close are they? They worked together for 18 years. My grandpa, he was the front of the house. He would host, and people would come to Mike and Ellie's only to see him. He was a great guy. He was very funny. And how's Dad changed over the last couple of years? He's very overwhelmed and stressed. Really? But he likes to do everything by himself. But he just can't delegate? Right, definitely a control freak. He's the boss, you know? Everywhere sure. in his life, he's the boss. So it'll be very interesting when you wow. have stuff to say to him. Wow. I hope Chef Ramsey can get through to my dad. He needs the help, he needs the change. It's crucial for the restaurant to survive and be successful for my family. I mean, that's my whole life. Hello. Hi. How I'm are you? I'm Mike and Ellie's. I'm Lexi. Right. Sister number two. Sister number two. Yes. Right. You are glamorous. Thank you. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> um, what's that smell? Is it just me? I don't you smell, smell it. it. Go outside, take a big deep breath of fresh air, and come I don't back know. in. I smell your cologne, which smells good. <laughs> no, well. Okay, wait. Ready? Let's do it. Now. Why is that? Now 
you? Is this a spell to you there? No, no I just smell just you. Just there. I just smell you. Really? Did somebody die in here last night? No. It's okay. possible. Uh, uh, oh, Jesus. Okay, what happened? What is that? All right, I, follow I, me, I haven't tasted the food yet. All right. Oh, I'd love to meet Dad. All right, I'll go get him. What's that smell? Can you smell something? No. Ah. no. How are you? Good to see you. Same here, sir. Come and say hello. And you are? Lewis. Lewis. The manager. You're the manager? Yes. Yeah, good to see you. Same here. Dad? Yes, ma'am. Chef Ramsay would like to meet you. Me? Meet Why you? Why me? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Why would he want to meet you? Follow me. I am quite nervous about Chef Ramsay's visit and how my dad's self-esteem will take it because he has a hard time taking criticism. This is good my to father, see you. Mike. Mike? I'm Mike. Pleasure. But the fact is, we need the help, and if somebody's willing to give it to us, we need to take it. I really hope that he can help Dad. How long have you been open? 15 years. 15 years. Yeah, when was the last time you changed something in the dining room? Uh, never. Wow. Everything's pretty much as I bought it. Yeah. 15 years ago. And how would you rate your food, 1 to 10? I would rate my food in the upper 9s. Wow. Great, I love that. Uh, I can't wait to yeah. taste it. The food is not the problem here. It's either the atmosphere, the ambience, or the service. Here's your regular menu, and here's your specials menu, sir. Is there someone PP on my menu? On this one. Is that a, is that? I don't know. That's not a urine stain, though. No. I don't think so. No. I'm pretty sure it's probably coffee. OK, great. Thank you. If you need anything, I'm at the front. Oh, smell. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'll be your server tonight. Uh, good to see you. Did you smell that, or is it just me? You smell something, right? <laughs> Yes. Honestly, it's like that we buried like bodies underneath the carpet. Yes, it's most definitely the carpet. It stinks. I, the restaurant is filthy, disgusting. It's full of mold. It's right. worse over there. Oh, <laughs> Seriously? You're in the good part. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, steak and seafood, and we have Italian food. Uh, Ginny, what is it? Fine dining restaurant or Italian? What are we? I don't know. Wow. There is no identity. Okay, I'll start with greenery with shrimp sauce. Okay. And let's go for chicken murphy. And then the special menu, the steak nelly. The steak nelly? Yeah. How would you like that cooked? Mid rare. Mid rare? Please, thank you very much. You're very welcome. I want to see where that 9 out of 10's hitting. It's only that there. Yeah, I'm moving. Mike, I have Chef Ramsay's order. Here we go. Chef Ramsay will like the food here. Anything that I make him, he's going to like. Guaranteed. it. Look at this place. Disaster. Louis. Chef? What happened to that lampshade over there on the wall? I don't know. Fix it, it's bugging me. How are you? Nice to see you. It's driving me crazy, I'm sorry. Oh, oh it comes on when it goes up anyway. <laughs> sorry. Just watch your head there. That's for Chef, make it nice. I made it, so it's right on the money. OK, Chef. Thank you. You're welcome. What? Greenie with shrimp sauce. And greenie with shrimp sauce. Oh, dear. Gross. Yeah, it's bland. It's just the I mean, sauce is bland. Yeah, everything's watery and shrimps are like rubber. It's horrible. Oh, Nowhere near a nine. All right. Would you like me to remove that from the uh, Yes, table? please, darling. The sad part is this isn't even the worst of it. This is bland, watery. The shrimp tastes like rubber. I don't know what he's talking about. I am a perfectionist. I will never put out food unless it's right. Is this the Murphy? Yeah. Oh, I hope it works. Chicken Murphy. Chicken Murphy. Huh? Wow. I was afraid to serve him the Chicken Murphy. It doesn't look very nice, does it? Um, it's embarrassing. It looks like a stew gone bad. That looks horrible. OK. Where's the manager? Lewis. Is that the normal style of presentation of Chicken Murphy? Sam, Lexi, girls. Um, visually impact. Does that look appetizing to you? Could definitely use an appearance update. A little mush. Mush. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. After Nelly died, the food's been kind of going downhill. It's kind of at the point where it's necessary for someone to say something. That's gross. It's overcooked. Just wet, soggy, and just tasteless. I call it a hot mess. I call it a hot joke. I'm done, thanks, darling. Yes, you're very welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, sir.
I can't afford to be up all night with the shits. Oh, excuse me. Thank God you didn't have the chicken Murphy. Bloody hell. Oof. Mike, it's just a hot mess, so... Hey, tough son of a bitch. Chef Ramsay is a ball buster, but if you have an impossible math problem, if Einstein was still alive, you'd talk to him. So we have a restaurant problem. We talk to the master. How you doing? It's a good thing. It's, it's for the better. You can tell that Chef Ramsay being so critical of the food, it kind of hurt my dad a little bit, but my dad needs help. And if this is what it takes, then this is what it takes. What's next? For the finale, it's going to be the steak Nelly. Right. Best of luck. I don't need to give him any more things to hate. I grew up cooking steaks, and I'm a master of the grill. I'm telling you, I'm good at this, man. I'm very good at this. Wow. This is the steak Nelly? Steak Nelly. Is that a steak or charcoal? No, chef. That's a piece of the steak. Wow. I feel like I've got a barbecue in my mouth. Come and taste that. How does that taste for you? Would you give that a nine? No. No. Like you said, it is... Charcoal. Char That's charcoal. Mike? What'd he say? This tastes like it's charcoal. You didn't like it? No. I tried it. It's not the wrong one. Well, like you said, there's a little bit of uh, charcoal. There ain't no way in hell I overcooked that steak. That's something that I make that everybody loves, and I never have a complaint. Aren't you going to go out there? For what? I don't know. Shouldn't you go out there? You are the owner, so you're supposed to check on things. I hope my dad will be willing to listen to Chef Ramsay and take the criticism and acknowledge that everything isn't perfect. Sit down. Instead of just being mad. Mike, I'm, uh, you know, I'm embarrassed. We've got some fucking big issues here. I thought the food was dated. I don't know how you can top the menu that size. And then some of the things were inedible. The food that was watery, bland, soggy. I know how to cook. Come on, the whole thing just looked an absolute fucking mess. What, I mean, that last steak? Right. I mean, how do you put a dish like that together? Well, the steak itself is a prime steak, so, I mean, uh, my... I was overcooked, so I had no prime. You rated the food 9 out of 10. I wouldn't pass it above 2. That's not good enough to come back for. No one here. I mean, I'm just going to tell you, man to man, it's not true. Either you're in denial or you don't care. Jeff Ramsey said my food was outdated, and, you know, I respect him, but I believe he's wrong in this situation. I know what my customers like, and I know what I like. That's what I like. Fuck that. No, I don't want to give a shit. After a lunch that left a lot to be desired, Chef Ramsay is back at Mike and Nelly's for dinner. Hi there, can I help you? And he isn't alone. Hello. Word of his arrival is spread, and the restaurant is booked solid for the evening. Free rush beer. What would you like tonight? I'm gonna have the shrimp steak. I'll have the chicken scarf yellow. Okay. Portobello mushroom with jumbo lump. Sun-dried artichoke, Alfredo, shrimp farm. Just tell me quickly how it works, line-wise. Here's what happens, Chef. They do all the cooking, and then they'll put the food out. I don't trust my staff to get the job done like I can do it. As long as I'm making it, I know it's 100%. Yeah, I got snapper, pork, and pepper. I got patty vodka. I got chicken parm. All right. Despite the fact that most of the cooking is being done by one person. Shrimp parm, eggplant parm. Give me 14. All right. Mike manages to push out food rapidly. Shrimp parm? Not at all, baby. My friend, lobster rev. I take this and go. But his quick cooking. Wow. Look at this food. Unfortunately, comes at a cost. Not good. Not yeah. good at all. Is something wrong with your back? Hi. The bread's falling off. Okay. Let's take it back. Yeah. Let them know. Hey, guys, the fried calamari, just let you know, it was mushy. It wasn't good. They didn't enjoy it. Just give you a heads up on that. Hey, sorry. I take nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. It's embarrassing. There's a man in there that is killing himself, and he's going down in flames. There's no stand-up set. Everything's just so chaotic. Pans have been thrown, steaks are on fire, and he's sort of totally oblivious to the kind of crap that's leaving his kitchen. It's actually quite sad. What's wrong with that? He said it's overcooked. All right. Just that camera, Latini. 
says it's the worst eggplant she ever had. It's not even rolled. <laughs> Mike, let's set it with burnt. It's hard to bring food back to Mike because Mike thinks the food is excellent. I know he's been cooking for 30 years, but the food is really not up to par. Onions are a little charcoal. Are they a little too well done for you? Oh, yeah. Let me take them away and bring some fresh ones for you. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Since Nellie's passed, the kitchen is a disaster. What's wrong now? Too well, too burnt. The food is not what it used to be. It's extremely frustrating. Mike, can I get more charred onions, but not too burnt, please? Charred onions, please. Charred onions. Mike, there's char there's charcoal. You're absolutely correct. That's charcoal. I need a charred onion right now. On the outside, Mike is really not showing any kind of emotions, but if you look into his eyes, you see this heartbreak this beating that he's taking internally. It's depressing. How's everything going back there? Yeah. Disaster. Disaster. Does your dad work like that every night? Yeah. But he's destroying himself. I mean, he's just absolutely nailing himself. He doesn't delegate as well as he should. Like, he's reading the ticket, and then he's getting it ready, and then he's cooking it, and then he's reading another order. And it's hard to watch, yeah. yeah. How are you supposed to run an entire restaurant, cook everybody's meal by yourself? Like, you can't do that. Hot stuff coming through. He doesn't really trust anybody else in the kitchen to help him, and it's a problem. Mike. Yes? I need to worry about that uh, refire on Penny Vodka. Hold on a minute, girlfriend. Get him. I'm going as fast as I can, baby. You all right? I want this night to be over. Here's a Penny Vodka. Take it, go. All the tickets are out. There's nothing left. All right, guys. Here's for everybody. Go grab them, man. One for me, too, right? I'm lost of words. Watching both of you behind the line in that kind of commotion there, it's like soldiers on the front line. In your mind, you've got it now that if you get through this battle, tonight's a success. You just want to get that food out. Do you enjoy cooking like that? I don't know if I enjoy it. It's just like what I do. But I mean, I bust my ass. I cook until we're done cooking. Working hard is one thing. Working fast and throwing food out with no care is another. No one's monitoring standards, and no one seems to care. You are running yourself into the ground. Dan, can I have a word with Yeah, Yes, sir. Will you shut the door, please? Certainly. Listen, seriously, have you been drinking? I'm having a vodka cranberry juice. I saw you drinking some beer. Uh, two beers, sir. Two right. beers. Two beers. That is not the way forward. You've got to get your head in the game, because the kind of mistakes that you made tonight represents a chef that doesn't seem to give a shit. I do give a shit. I do. I Listen, I drink too much, you know. But why I'm, are you doing this to yourself? I don't know. I just don't know. I'm like, I'm lost. I'm lost in space. Why? I don't know. Life's just getting tougher for me, man. You know? I mean, this business is failing. I owe everybody money. I got two daughters going to college. And I'm just trying to, like, make it. You know? And it's not working anymore, you know? I don't this know where to move from here. It's hard for me, you know? This is my passion. I only know how to cook. That's all I've ever done, you know, since I was 19 years old. The passion. When did that go? I don't know. After Dad passed away? Yes. Yeah. You know, since my father died, I'm starting to give up. I am. I, I can admit it to you. I'm like, I feel defeated. Is know? that why you're drinking more? Yeah, probably. You can't go down this line, Mike. You cannot go down this line. It's the beginning of the end. I'm telling you. Well, I don't know what to do next. I really don't. I'm confused. But you've got to get out of denial. And there's got to be a fire in your belly that you've got to rekindle. That's all. Yeah. OK? I'll try my best. OK. See you in the morning. Right. Good night. Good night. This restaurant is definitely taking a toll on me. Everything falls on my lap, and it's wearing me out. It's a tough life. After the death of his father, 
Mike has been in a downward spiral, and so has his restaurant. He has clearly lost his way. And Chef Ramsay knows that in order for this restaurant to have any chance of surviving... How are you? Morning. I'm good. How are you? He has to put Mike back on course. It's quite nice getting out of the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. It almost feels like it's um, like a ticking time bomb in there. And I'm concerned, I think, really, about Dad. And I had a chat with him last night, and he was, for the first time, being open and honest. He admitted he'd lost control, and sadly, that he was on the verge of giving up. And we can't give up. And then I noticed something upsetting last night, is the amount of drink. I feel like he's trying to drown his sorrows. Yeah. Definitely. I he... think he's very lost right now. Everything fell on his shoulders after, after Nelly passed away, and there's just so much mm -hmm. more responsibility, and that's a lot to handle. Yeah. I don't think he got over losing his father. I don't think he's got over that hurdle. I don't think so, no. No, I mean, we were he was back at work, you know, and there was no time off. It was, mm -hmm. he was just there. I think he's hurting. I think deep down inside, I, I don't see a happy... No, you can tell that he's hurting. Mm -hmm. Like, always. <sighs> That's awful. I mean, he's got two kids in college, and, like, what does he have to show for it? Like, he's working so much harder than he should be. Mm -hmm. And, like, he's suffering so much, and I hate to see him like that. But Dad is driving himself into the ground. Yeah. And I don't know how much longer, you know, he can continue to do it. <laughs> you know, it's about time we actually turned around and said, hey, Dad, I want you back. I don't want you to listen. I don't want you to slow down. He's your dad. You're his last hope. And last night, that was a cry for help. Do you think you can help him? Yeah. Of course I'm here to help. But I can't help unless he's prepared to change himself. Hello, Chef. Morning, Mike. How are you? A uh, tough night last night, right? Yeah. Quite. I came to see the girls because I think the bottom line is, Mike, you mean a lot to this family, and there's no doubt in how hard you're working. But you're not a machine. <clears throat> you're not 25, Mike. You know, you're 55. And the girls have got something to say, and I want you to listen. OK. And I'll see you back at the uh, restaurant. OK. OK, thank you. Thank you, girls. Bye. So, uh, what do you want to tell me? Like, it's really difficult seeing you, like, struggling this much and working so hard. Right. You have to let go a little bit and not work as hard as you are. I understand. I understand. I don't know how to let go. I don't trust anybody else. But I think that in order for you to be able to function like this, you need to let some other people take on some responsibilities. I would love to take take off and let them I know cook you, for me. I know, but you don't, you don't trust, trust them enough to do it. You know you have your guard up all the time. I do. You, you, don't, you don't, like, trust anyone. So what do we need, a nicer mic? Is that what you're saying? No, we need no, a more just... open mic. OK. <laughs> so I'm willing to give a shot at change here. And you're going to open up, though, and, like, let people actually just talk to you? It's not going to be an overnight thing, but I'm willing to listen. I've been wanting to tell my dad these things for a long time already. And I really hope that he was listening because the problem with the restaurant isn't that we need a decoration change. The fact is that my dad needs the change. After spending the morning at Mike's home, Chef Ramsay is anxious to get Mike back in the kitchen. Show me the fridges. And reignite his passion with food. Here's the meat. Steaks go right up on the grill. Jesus, those trays not clean last night? No, I didn't clean them last night. No? I got out of here. They're Shit. a little messy. What's that? I don't know. That's chicken farm. That's cooked. Yeah, that's cooked. That's with raw. Uh-huh. We don't get these fridges changed at night? Sunday nights, we do a deep cleaning. So it's Monday. Yesterday was Sunday night. Yeah. Are they all kept like this? Mike, you got to cover this stuff. Seriously? What else have you got going on here? Look at this. I'm getting nervous now. 30 years in the business, come on. I'm thinking, holy shit, what else is he going to find in here that is going to embarrass me? Oh, you're kidding me. What is that? Who's responsible for this? Chef Ramsay was looking forward to working with the chefs on fixing the food. Show me the fridges. That is, until he made a series of shocking discoveries. Oh, you're kidding me. What is that? Who's responsible for this? Mike, come on. 
Seriously? Why is it in here? Where's the walk-in right over here? You are kidding me. What is that? That's the lobster vest. Shit! Eggplant. What's that? That is the calamari from last night. It was prepped yesterday. Why is it bubbled? Jesus Christ. Why is it in here? You're right, Chef. Get it out. That's contaminated. We can't leave fridges like this. I do know those things need to be changed. I tried to talk to Mike, but he won't listen to me. My food got served from that fridge last night. Yeah. Unbelievable. What's in here? What's that? Those are meatballs. When were they made? They were made last week. Last week. How do you know it's a week old? No dates. Does that make any sense? Come on, this is basic. It's just become sloppy here, and I need to start making things right. The fridge has been ignored at the end of the evening, and then food's left in the oven. Oh, come on. You're absolutely right. It's a disgrace. And discovering that, what am I supposed to do now? Where do we start? Tell me. What time are the team in? 2.30. Get them in earlier. I want that whole fucking place clean. You're better than this. Fuck me. Yo, get a ride in as quickly as possible. Chef Ramsay wants everybody here now. I believe it's time to turn this place upside down. Some things are falling through the cracks, but cracks can be filled. Everything can be fixed. Every night from now on. Right. No more fucking around. All right. Can't do what I'm doing. I'm going to have to change if I want to change my restaurant. Goodbye. Beer? I'm ready. This is where we're going to start to fix this place. With a thorough cleaning by the staff and what appears to be a change in attitude by Mike. Uh, first of all, the place is looking cleaner. Chef Ramsay can now turn his attention to the area that needs the most help, the kitchen. So I'm going to do two steaks, a ribeye on the bone and a filet. I've been cooking steaks for 32 years. I know how I do it, which is the right way. But maybe he can teach me something in a nice way. Not in a I'm going to kill you kind of way. <laughs> OK, onto the grill. I want to render that fat down. Cooking with Chef Ramsay is a dream come true. Uh, get a nice seat. Oh, on there, please, Daniel. With that, I'm going to do a chive mash. Just great to see how his hands move like a ballet with his fingers. I was in awe. That's a real mashed potato. No horseradish in there? A, a touch of horseradish, well spotted. I felt super inspired by Chef Ramsay. I don't know how to put it into words right now. Asparagus and fries for the filet. Touch of creme fraiche. Perfect. I'm used to cooking like one certain way, and this is a little different. When you spend a fortune on the ingredients, I want the customers to taste them. I want it to ooze the flavor of a ribeye. Simply done. Let's have a little uh, taste, yeah? I'm feeling very, very well. I can already feel the fire burning in my gut, which is something that has not happened in a while. Uh, waiting stuff. Get some knife and forks. Dig in. Everybody's good. Oh, my gosh. It just melts in your mouth. I love the asparagus. I'm coming over. I'm so excited to see it. My dad's so happy. It seems like he really does want to change things and make things better, and I know he can really do it. Can I order this for dinner? This is so good. Unbelievable. Now that Mike has finally seen the light with how his steaks can be improved... No more food to go out that we got some pride with. Perfect. Chef Ramsay is now focused on the makeover of Mike and Nelly. And he begins with something that has been driving him crazy since the day he walked into the restaurant. I need some help. OK. I've come across the most wretched carpet I've ever seen, and it is deplorable. So I need something durable, something strong, something that can take a lot of footfall. OK. Uh, that's nice. I like that one as well with the blue. Can we get this done tonight? Is that possible? Absolutely. With one major change in motion, Chef Ramsay's team is hard at work trying to accomplish one of the most difficult makeovers they have ever faced. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Chef. How are we feeling? Hi, Hi. Nervous. Mike, I've never seen you look so nervous. I'm speechless. You're yes. speechless. OK, today I am proud to unveil the new Mike and Ellis. Are you ready? Yes, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> OK. One, two, three. There we are. Oh, my God. Mike and Ellis Steakhouse. Oh, my God, it's so nice. Look at that.
Wasn't that Mike and Nelly's steak and seafood? Well, what this community is lacking is a great steakhouse, yes? Steakhouse has been my dream my whole life long. Right now, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion, I don't even know how I'm standing here. Mike, one thing that you're going to see when you walk through that door is a new identity and a new you. I'm a new me. Let's do it. Let's go, guys. <laughs> hey, everybody ready? Ready. Go straight into the restaurant. Oh. Off you go. Oh Jump in. Oh, my God. 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 It is gorgeous. It chills everywhere. Wow. This is so <laughs> Holy transformation. Oh. Welcome to the new Mike and Ellis. This is gorgeous. <laughs> this, this is, is so great. Beautiful. This is awesome. <laughs> we walk in, see the restaurant for the first time. We see modern art, the new chairs, the new carpet. I can't get a smile off my face. It's outstanding. It's awesome. It's so great. <laughs> this is so great. Beautiful. Look at this place. Wow. Gone are those hideous arches. We've opened the restaurant up. You have a very elegant, open space, and it's stylish. Gone is the old, worn-out decor, and replaced with a stunning, contemporary, rustic look. New carpets, wow. and that smell has gone. I want to take my shoes off. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, it's incredible. Oh, my God. Unreal. I Big am, man, you OK? I'm totally amazed. <laughs> yeah? Oh, there you are. I don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm so amazed. <laughs> <laughs> my dream my whole life is to be a steakhouse. It's an absolute transformation that's beyond my wildest dreams. Janine, how are you feeling? I, we're going to be the talk of the town. Yeah. And we're going to do you proud. We will. Trust me, you're going to do yourselves proud. <laughs> if Nelly was here right now, he would be so happy. He really would. And I could feel him here now. In addition to the updated look and new identity, oh. come in, please. Chef Ramsay has created an elegant, flavorful oh. modern menu. Oh. Welcome to the new Mike and Ellie's menu. Oh God, this menu is our foundation, our new start to Mike and Ellie's. Simple, delicious, and modern. Okay, see this look. It's incredible. Let's start off at the top of the table here. Maryland crab cakes, delicious, simple, served with a Old Bay mayonnaise, yeah? Angus sliders. Yeah, slider. Aged white cheddar, shaved lettuce, and a special sauce. The hallmark of this restaurant it's going to be the steaks. I love it. Start off with the filet mignon, eight ounce, beautifully grilled. Finish with that wonderful, delectable butter. New York strip, 12 ounce, modern and beautiful and stunning. Next to that, we've got a delicious braised short rib. That's served with a red wine sauce and whipped chives potatoes. The side dishes. Look at that mac and cheese. Oh, my god. How can you have a steakhouse with no mac and cheese? It's topped with some crispy breadcrumbs. Delicious. That's unbelievable. Right, guys, can you get some spoons, knife and forks? <laughs> I want you to dig in. Thank you. Yay. Dig in, dig in, dig in. Sam, trust you to go straight for the desserts. They're fantastic. Oh my god, the filet. I gotta get over there. <laughs> oh my god. Rings. I thought my food was good, but the new menu is just unbelievable. Oh my god. Mmm, this is so good. You are the man, Chef Ramsay. You came in here and you turned us completely around. This is definitely the start of something big. I see this restaurant going far. As the doors open on relaunch night. Hello, welcome to the new Mike and Ellie's. Welcome. There's excitement in the air and a buzz in the dining room. The decor is awesome now. As customers are eager to try out the new Mike and Nelly's Steakhouse. Back in the kitchen. Here we go, guys, yes. Chef Ramsay wants the workload divided, with Mike doing less and Dan doing more. Daniel, I'm trying to get him to break away. You are the future, so show it to me and show it to him. Yes, sir. Good. Mike, focus on the grill. Okay. I'm wanting Daniel running this and coordinate the kitchen tonight. I hope Mike will back off a little and let me come in and help him out. I'm very capable of taking over. The most important thing is that everything goes out perfect. I'm hoping that Dan can handle the rush. I've been trying to find a chef for the last 15 years that can do what I do. This is nerve-wracking shit. Yeah. Here we go. First ticket. Order in. One strip mid-well, one strip medium. I want to hear an echo. A callback. I got two strips, medium well and medium. Thank you, buddy. So far, Chef Ramsay's plan is working. Mike gets the first steaks on the grill. Wipe the plate down, please. Make it look pretty. Come on. Dan gets the kitchen in sink. Crab cakes up in the window. Useful. Let's go. And customers are receiving their appetizers. This is really good. It's like heaven. That is spectacular. And the reviews are glowing. Next entree, short ribs, 
McGriff mid-rare, one ribeye mid-rare, and a French fry. Where are those fries? Coming right now, baby. 25 seconds. 25 seconds, all right. I'm feeling great. Everybody is working together as a team. We're going to be firing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have four fillets up here. But only one hour into service, Mike is no longer working in tandem with Dan. Order a tomato, a Caesar, a crab cake. That's the one I just called for that's going out. And instead of allowing Dan to organize, Mike is now confusing the kitchen. Stop, take a step back, and regroup. Let's go. Next ticket to strip medium, filet medium. All right, let's start putting these sticks up. We've just stopped listening to each other. I'm the main cog in this restaurant. I always have been, always will be. Dan, I was doing this before you were born. Mike, you can't slip into these old ways. Tell him you're here, man. I don't know what's going to happen. Mike's not listening to what Chef Ramsay is saying. We've all forgotten what the fuck we're doing in here. Everything is falling apart. Everything is going to shit. Mike, just let me do this. Come on, guys. You know what? Slow the shit down. You're going ahead. I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. You're fucking us over big time. And right now, I'm having enough. It's only an hour into relaunch at Mike and Nelly's. We're going to be firing a hold steak. On, hold on, hold on. I have four fillets up here. Mike has slipped back into his old ways and is refusing to share the leadership of the kitchen with Dan. You're going ahead. I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. And a successful relaunch is in jeopardy. I need you running this and coordinate the kitchen properly. And I want you to be behind him, yes? Yes, sir. All right, let's pick up one strip medium. Pick it up a ribeye, shrimp, chicken, and ribeye. I, I'm, I'm, I'm losing you. You're confirming to me you're not listening one little bit. I know it's hard, but it's not fucking difficult. It will be if you don't listen. Get them working for you. Uh -huh. I need Daniel now to start firing these orders. Right, I got you. Come on, you can do this. This restaurant is not all about me. I need help to run it, and Dan's a man to do it. Order in, strip. Filet medium, ribeye medium. Excellent, let's go. Next up, two skirt, one rare, one mid-rare. I got it, Daniel. Rare's going on, it'll be two minutes. With Dan regaining control of the tickets. Dan, yeah, tell me again what's going on right now. Filet medium cod. Filet medium and a cod, got it. The kitchen has found a proper rhythm. Medium well on the right, Chef. Mike. Yes, sir. Our steaks look fantastic. I got it, baby. My table loved all their steaks. Thank you. I got zero complaints about the food tonight. Everything was amazing. Steaks rested? Yes, they are. Put it out, baby. Dan was really into his job tonight and really took a lot of pressure off of me. Like the way it looks in here? Uh, the food will be out in plenty of time, and you'll love it. It was very rewarding walking around out there. Good. Nice to see it. I felt my father's spirit here watching over me and everybody, and it felt wonderful. How you doing, Daddy? I can't get the smile off my face. My dad completely turned it around. It's great to see him. So happy. Mike, how was the dining room? I'm good, bro. Everybody looks happy and smiling. Keep it that way. All right, brother. Board is clear. Chef Ramsay showed my staff that they need to support what I do. Everybody did great. I think this is going to be the most successful place around here. Let me tell you something. When I first arrived, your head was in the grill, stubborn, wouldn't come out. You've transformed and worked with me. Thank you. In there right now is the spirit of Nelly. I agree. And for me, that is enough to confirm that you can do it. I believe in you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for everything. We appreciate Cheers. everything you did and more. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Likewise. It's good to see you, man. Yeah. Keep it going. Yes. Well done. Chef Ramsey inspired me. I was ready to close this place up. So we got through it, we persevered, and now I'm gonna rock this place. I'm gonna rock this town. Come here. Thank you. My father, Nelson, would be crying right now, overwhelmed by joy. I know he's watching. Daddy, thank you. I hope you're proud of him. Good job. Thank you, sir. Yeah, look after him, will you? Will do. Thank you for everything. Thanks okay. so much again. Get that spirit in there. Well done. When I first arrived at Mike and Ellie's, this had to be the most depressing restaurant in America, from the food to the decor, even to the owner. But tonight, with the help of a guardian angel named Nelly, a miracle happened, because this restaurant has become the hottest steakhouse in the whole of New Jersey. I just hope it will continue along those lines. That carpet, I've never smelled anything so disgusting in all my fucking life. I'm sure there's bodies under there. In the weeks that followed, business in Mike and Nelly's boomed. It's amazing. 
Clearly, the new menu is a big hit in this New Jersey town. I will be back for this one. Look at this menu, my God. This is a classic steakhouse menu. My customers love it. Outstanding. This is the whole turnaround I've been waiting for. Order in. Dan has been outstanding in his new role in the kitchen. 15 seconds, 15 seconds. Do we have those strips mid well? Coming right now, baby. And Mike? is embracing the change. Wow. I got to Wait to see the menu. Allowing him to spend more time with his diners. It was excellent. Thank you. And now, he's following in the footsteps of his father. I love you, brother. I love you, too. And there is nobody happier than his two daughters, Samantha and Lexi.